Hey guys, John from ARTV. It's time for a collaborative review, one that I had promised to do. Me and Spectrum Pulse got together and talked about the new Rise Against record. It's called The Black Market. Make sure you check out his channel. It's linked in the description down below, or you can click the annotation on the screen at any time to take you over there. He has so much good content over there. Me and him definitely have differing opinions a lot of the time, but I think that's what makes things interesting. He also covers a lot of different content, and I really respect the guy. He really knows his stuff, so check out his channel subscribe and here is our collaborative review of the new rise against record the black market okay guys I'm here with mark from spectrum pulse I promised this collaboration and mark it's good to have you on the show today yeah it's great having you too here John well uh, I wanted to start off just kind of like getting our general feelings on rise against just out mm -hmm. in the open like what is your relationship with the band through the years um, I started with Rise Against, I started listening to them briefly back in 2006, 2007, when I had a buddy of mine who was really into the band. To me, I didn't get huge into the band until, well, I, I can't even say I really ever got huge into Rise Against. Right. They were one of those bands that, they were really good on the first two records out of Fat Records that I really liked, but moving, when they signed to Geffen, things, to me, started going downhill. A lot of their material got darker, probably not to the benefit, and it just was harder. It was a lot harder for me to take seriously. And then I just kind of fell out with them around their 2008 release. That I think it was 2007, 2008. Just did not click for me at all. This is probably my that. big reintroduction to them since then. And okay, and yeah, what about you? Um, it all started for me around uh, 2005, 2004 with uh, Siren Sound of Counterculture. Um, and kind of backtracking, picking up obviously their debut, the unraveling, and that's kind of really what got me into them. And like you, I never was like an all-out Rise Against fan, never fully in love, I guess you could say, with one of their records, but they've definitely always had material that it's at least held my attention or made me want to keep checking out future releases. Yeah. So Black Market it gets announced a few months ago. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard about it like right at the time, but that, did that bring excitement to you, or was that something that you were kind of dreading or something that you were planning to check out? It was something I was going to check out because I knew I had friends who were interested in me eventually talking about it. But as right. it is, like for me, Rise Against was always one of those bands I was kind of ambivalent on. And coming out of this record, I got to say, I really enjoyed this album. Like it was a really pleasant surprise for me. I really liked it, and I that really shocks me because I did not expect this record to be all that special. But honestly, I really liked it. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm kind of on the other side of the spectrum here on this one. I was I'm not totally let down, I guess you would say, by this record, but I just feel like a spark is like missing in this one that has been there in past releases. Some of the vocals for me felt a little bit lackluster. Uh, the guitar riffs. Uh, as a whole, I guess you could say, just weren't doing anything that inventive that I, that I was that excited about. Um, I think that there was a lot in terms of the vocals that left uh, a lot to be desired, I guess you could say. There were some tracks that definitely stood out to me, but as a whole, I'm not really on board with the record. Wow. Um, I would completely disagree with that in terms of this, because going into this record, coming in, I would argue that the riffs, they aren't as hard and abrasive as they've been, but there's a lot of texture in the guitar work. They've changed some of the production arrangement. The bass is much more further to the front, and to me, this record's a lot more melodic, which it's a lot more, it's a lot more melody-driven. Honestly, I'd say it's a lot more poppy. And, Absolutely. And to me, you know what? I actually think that's a great direction for Rise Against, because if I'm being completely honest, I could never, ever take them seriously as a hardcore band. Like, as in terms of his hardcore vocals, I never found them all that impressive. Whereas him stepping into more of a, a rough-edged, melodic singing reminded me a lot of Against Me in a good way. And I was... I really dug a lot of the... I dug, I dug the vocals. I found that he... It was a more... It was, I wouldn't say more down-key, but more melodic-driven. It was, it was more memorable for me. I appreciated that. Um, I thought some of the... I thought some of the melodic constructions were very well-balanced across the board... There were, and some of their better hooks, like the hook on um, The Great Die-Off, I think was great. Tragedy in Time is probably the most poppy song in that album, but honestly, I really dug the hook on it. Um, then you had Zero Visibility. There was, they went through maybe three or four 
guitar change-ups in their melody lines throughout that song, I was really impressed by it. It really had a real chugging riff to it. There was potency there. Absolutely. Zero visibility is probably my the highlight of the record for me, honestly. Mm -hmm. Zero visibility is totally fresh. It's something that it felt a little bit familiar to me just because it slightly reminds me of a Muse track, Knights of Sidonia, in terms of guitar riff. Oh, but yeah. It broke into the on song, and it was just incredible to me. That track honestly blew me away. Mm -hmm. now, and what like you were saying, you like? what tracks did I not like? Um, yeah. For me, there were problems with uh, Tragedy in Time. That was one that, even though I did kind of enjoy the pop sensibilities, and like you were saying, I can enjoy the popier side of the band. It's just for that one, I don't find it like leaving a lasting impression, in my mind at least. It's something that I kind of got tired of after a couple of listens and didn't really want to go back to. Um, another one that I had a problem with, probably the track Methadone. That one, in my opinion, just kind of felt a little bit uninspired in terms of the vocals. Tim just didn't feel like he was... I mean, even though they are like leaning towards pop sensibilities and a little bit of a new direction here, it still mm -hmm. felt like it was lacking something in the vocal department. But... In terms, and even with the songs that I don't like, there are still elements that I do like. It's just that, not as a whole, am I really loving like all that many of these tracks. See, I'm completely the opposite here. Like in terms of, I guess since I really grab, I really did like the vocals. For me, the element that ties it together better than I was ever expecting from Rise Against was the lyrics. Because one, here's the one thing, I have never ever been able to take Rise Against political material remotely seriously. Because I'm coming from an anarcho-punk background. I listen to bands like Crass and No Effects and Chumbawamba and even some Rage Against the Machine where you can tell to some degree there is nuance in their presentation of the political spectrum. And when Rise Against always did politics, they were always so earnest and they were always so very much broad in their presentation of their political views that I could just never take it seriously. Whereas this album, they went broader with their subject matter in terms of the populist vibe that they were going for. They were trying to reach out to a group of people. They were trying to go for what I consider probably a very optimistic point of view in some of their lyrics and going forward, how they don't want to deal with negativity. They don't want to deal with people who are apathetic. They want to get people riled up and excited. They've been around long enough to have gotten to that point. And they sound crisper. They sound fresher in that vibe. And I thought it was really, I thought lyrically it may have been broader, but it fit the pop sensibility of the record. And that broader sensibility, honestly, is a better fit for their lyrics, at least for me. And what, what you were saying there, it's a very good point, what you were saying from a lyrical point of view. I felt mm -hmm. like this whole album was a lot more personal, a lot more introspective rather than political, and that's a huge, a huge change for Rise Against. I was not prepared for that at all, but the, th the thing is, I'm actually, that's one thing I am excited about for this record, because I felt like the Rise Against formula, you know, it was kind of getting stale. They had this, they were sticking to their guns, they were pretty much, they had every record set out what it was going to be. There were going to be your more political tracks, there's going to be a couple that are a little bit more personal, and then you've got a Rise Against record. This time around, they're back in the studio, um... The only problem I had, I saw an interview where Tim said that he didn't really know what to write about, so that makes me feel like some of these tracks were kind of forced, but at the same time, I still, I think the lyrics on the majority of the record are probably some of the best parts about them. Yeah, I would completely agree with you there. Like, the one the one song that did strike out for me in terms of lyrics was, um, what was it called? Uh, People Live Here, the slow, folk-inspired, almost yeah. ballad that they had near the end of the album. I honestly think the album should have ended there because I thought Bridges was really uninspired as a song. But as it is, I found that song, like in terms of the concept they were going for, it takes a lot of the whole masculine ideals that, that, certain, that certain archetypes in the United States tend to uh, strive for and try to emulate. And then it strips them down and reveals them as so futile and so pointless and to be in the case of the larger world around them when facing with environmental havoc or catastrophes that they can't control I liked how they went to the deconstruction they went for it they pointed up in God and they're basically like we don't get this like my God might be bigger than yours but that's just sarcasm that's hollow lie because really right. it's it's an epitome of how small they feel and I guess that really anchors that whole anchors the whole album because they stretch out and they say a lot of 
they make a lot of statements to trying to draw themselves together, but yet they have the moments to say, yeah, we really are this small, but yet we're still going to keep trying to do a lot of the same things. We're still going to keep fighting. We're still going to work together as a group, as a society. And that's the and if you want to brush, if you want to turn up your nose at it, that's your choice. But we don't have we don't have to have time for you anymore. And right. honestly, I kind of respect that of Rise Against. It shows a more mature side of the band, especially considering they've spent so many albums railing on political issues and going for something that's a little bit more populist at this point of view in their career. I can back that. Right. And uh, what you're saying there, it also I think applies to tracks like A Beautiful Indifference. And what I took away from that song is that. They are obviously very politically driven and are like hard up on all these issues and wanting to get it out in their songs and convey messages to people. And sometimes I feel like with this track they were relaying that sometimes it's okay to be a little bit indifferent and not just if you don't have a stance, don't be with us just for the hell of it. Like yeah. be with us because you're actually behind the cause. Exactly. And honestly, I think that shows a degree of maturity. I, in Rising Against, I haven't seen them for a while, and they. Like this record feels like they've actually got a bit of a grasp of the world. They've got a grasp of what they're going for lyrically. And considering they opted for a more melodic structure, they went broader. But this is a sort of broadness that works in a sort of, yeah, I'll call it pop punk because that's pretty much what it is. And I don't right. mind that. I, I was surprised how much I liked this in terms of its construction, in terms of lyric. It fits together for me. It, it, I'm not sure how long it's going to last for me. I'm not sure how long it's going to stick with me. Um, outside of Zero right. Visibility, because that song's amazing. But honestly, yeah. I like this. It, it does what a good pop record should do. So, yeah. The last thing that I really wanted to ask you is, what are you thinking of the singles? Um, I know one of them wasn't really an official single, that being the eco-terrorist and me, but of course, the lead single, I Don't Want to Be Here Anymore. Um, I'm not surprised by it. It's the sort of single that is you'd expect from Rise Against. It's one of, the, In my opinion, it's one of the weaker tracks on the album. It feels a little bit. It feels a little bit sour. It feels a little bit anti-populist. I get the frustration. I get the disgust that he's bringing to the table, but at the same time, it's also a track that doesn't really move me all that much. I like the hook reasonably. It, it, there are some good. There are some good hooks on this album in terms of melodic composition and in terms of just plain catchiness. But right. in terms, I, I, I do think it's a weaker song. And the eco terrorist in me. That being one of my personal like favorite tracks, I feel like it was a bit out of place though. Um, for me, I kind of like what I thought about in terms of comparison. There, it's kind of like what Hearts All Gone was to Blink 182's Neighborhood. That's yeah, what agreed. The comparison in me is to the black market. It's it's a weird song. It comes in out of place. It's much more hard edged, and that's one of those songs that had one of those lines. It had a few lines in that song in that song that ultimately made it feel a little bit aimless. It, it was going for that vibe, well, when it all comes down, are you going to say you were on our side? And I'm like, and I'm, the more I'm thinking about it, it's like, it would, like, people might say they were on their side, but actions speak louder than words. Right, right. And that, and, and a lot of people will say they were on this side just to be part of the whole, part of the whole mindset. And that sort of flies in the face of the band's own ideology. Even though right. I do think the I do think the balance between the harder vocals and the softer and the more melodic vocals was reasonably well done. Rides Against can pull that balance, but honestly, for me, that was another one of the songs I wasn't really a fan of. Uh, I'm feeling about the complete opposite on those. Just in terms of like, I there are, I don't like the fact that, like you pointed out, they contradict themselves on the eco terrorist and me. But that actually, in terms of like structure, maybe I'm just a sucker for like some of like their older styles making their way into the music with some of the more poppy influences. I thought mm -hmm. that was probably, it's probably my second favorite behind Zero Visibility, and of course I Don't Want to Be Here has this guitar riff and the chorus, like you already mentioned, getting stuck in my head all the time. So those being two of my favorite tracks right there. Yeah. Overall I guess feelings? Overall feelings, I really liked it. Um, probably it's it's in my upper echelon of Rise Against Records. Still not whether or not I'm still on the fence whether or not it's better than their second one because their second one their second record on Fat Records, it Revolutions and I forget what the name of it oh, is. Oh, okay, okay, that's gonna bother me if I can't actually think of that one. <laughs> yeah, throw it. Revolution. Um, Revolutions per minute. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. honestly, that was. I really like that record. Um, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a hard sell against that one. But overall, right. in terms of favorite tracks for me were Z were Zero Visibility, 
I really like Tragedy in Time because I think that it has it has a solid emotional arc to it. I think the crescendo at the end is really potent, and I really like People Live Here. Um, the two songs I did I could do without uh, Sudden Life. We didn't really talk about that one. It just kind of felt right. inert to me. It didn't do a lot for me whatsoever. And Bridges, same sort of thing. Very lackluster. Just not a lot there at all. Right. right. Bridges totally felt like I I like you thought it should have ended on people live here, because Bridges really did not bring anything new to the table. I think it had just enough grit to it to make it kind of passable as a Rise Against song, but it felt like it was maybe even out of order. If it had come earlier in that, earlier in the record, I might not have had a problem with it, but seeing it as a closer, I'm really, I'm not feeling it. In terms of, like, rating, though, what would you throw on this? What's that? To me, it was a throwaway track. It was just filler. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree with that. And what about a rating for you? Uh, if you could go on my, if you could convert to my scale, I know we normally have different scales. I'm on a scale of five. You're on a scale of ten. What do you think? Honestly, I'm gonna go with my scale. I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten, and which is a four out of five in your books. Right. Okay. I'm feeling I a three out of five. I <laughs> Right. Yeah, I, I'm surprised at how surprised you were with this record. I came into this collaboration thinking that maybe you would even score lower than me, but that's yeah. awesome, man, and I'm glad that we got a good discussion going here. Make sure you check out his channel, Spectrum Pulse. It's linked. There's an annotation on the screen if you want to click to that, or the link is in the description down below. Thanks for being on the show today, Mark, and uh, any parting words? Yeah, um, make sure to check out my channel, subscribe to his, but uh, subscribe to John's channel. He's putting out some great album reviews, covers a lot of stuff I don't even touch. I tend to I tend to spread a little bit wider net and most often spread myself too thin. Um, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any comments, agree, disagree, otherwise, put them in there. I'm sure we'd all like to hear about it. I hope you guys enjoyed our collaborative review that we just did of the new Rise Against record. Make sure to check out Spectrum Pulse's channel and, of course, subscribe to mine as well. Um, we'll see you very soon in the future. I've got a lot of reviews on the way. And hit the like button on this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if any of you guys are here from the Spectrum Pulse, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon right here on ARTV. You can click right here to see my last review or here to see my second channel.